Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are going to learn how to create custom made titles for our videos for all you upcoming content creators or YouTubers. So if you take a look at the screen in front of you, this is what we are going to create today. However, I do want to quickly note that this is going to be Mac based as a couple of the apps we're going to use today are only available on Mac computers and not PC. So unfortunately, if you guys are on a PC, this video is not going to be much use to you. However, for those of you who are on the Mac and want to carry on with this video, then let's get started. So I'm going to break this down into a three stage process. And what I mean by that is we are going to start off in Affinity Designer or alternatively, you could use Adobe Illustrator. It's up to you or any vector program that you enjoy to use. And what we're going to do inside of that is we are going to do the mock up of our title and design it how we like it to look. Then we are going to take that project and import it into Apple Motion 5, where we are going to begin to animate it and just add various effects. Then finally, we're going to open up Final Cut Pro so we can see it in action. And generally, that is all there is to it. We're just going to use three different apps throughout this video. So with that said and done, let's get started. So the first thing we want to do inside of Affinity Designer or whether you're in Adobe Illustrator is choose a canvas size. And what I am designing for myself is 4K as all my videos tend to be in 4K to give you guys a better quality. And in Affinity Designer, that QFHD there is your 4K option. Alternatively, if you just want to design for full HD, you can do that here with a FHD 1080p. So just choose one or the other, it's entirely up to you. Once you have selected your canvas size, we're just going to go ahead and create that. So for me, the first thing I like to do when I'm creating titles is just find myself a background just to give me a visual representation of maybe some video content. And the way I'm going to do that is just go over to the stock section over on the right. If you guys aren't seeing this inside of Affinity Designer, then just go up to your view menu on the top, go down to your studio and just make sure that you've got that stock section checked and you'll have access to this also. So inside of here, I'm just going to search for maybe a skyline image, just something I can work with. So that one there will do fine. I'm just going to drag that in and I'm going to resize that to fit the canvas. You guys can choose any image you like. It's entirely up to you. Alternatively, you don't even need to have an image. You can just work on a white background if that's what you would prefer. So I'm just going to put that into place and it's going to zoom back out with command or control zero. Then I'm going to head back over to my layers and I'm just going to lock this one so I can't disturb that while we are designing. And we'll do that with that little padlock icon right there. And now we can't move that around. So what we need to do now is just go ahead and find ourselves a background shape that we're going to use for our title. So you can use any of these shapes that you like. It's entirely up to you. You don't have to follow the exact design I'm doing here. I'm going to make this really basic just to be quick and show you really how you put it together. But you can follow along using any kind of design that you like. So for me to start with, I'm going to go for this rounded rectangle. And I'm going to draw this out to the rough size that I would use in the title. So around that size is good for me, maybe a little bit smaller, somewhere like that. And the way the vision this really is just think of this background picture as your video and just think where you would like your title to sit in the video and how big you would like it. And that's really how you're going to determine your size and position. So what I want to do next is I don't want to leave that white. I think I actually want to put a gradient on this. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my fill tool just over here. And I'm just going to drag that from one side down to the other. And you can come in here and change these colors now if you like by selecting any of these points and changing those. For me, I kind of like the silver effect that we've got here with the gray and the white. So I'll probably just leave that the way it is. And what I want to do next before anything else is I'm going to put a drop shadow on that. So I'm just going to grab my move tool quickly and I'm going to go down to my effects in my layers. And I'm just going to choose an outer shadow. And I'm just going to change the radius and the offset to roughly around 10 pixels. And just hit that enter button. And if I just go ahead and turn off that background image, we can see that we've got the shadow applied there. So that'll be more visible once we put this on a moving video. And I'm just going to turn that back on. And looking at this, I don't really like how rounded my corners are. So I'm going to also change that by coming up to the top here where it says corner. And I've got 25% at the moment. I'm going to change that to around 10, I think. And just see how that looks. For me, that looks better. So moving on, what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in an image, which is either going to be a photo of yourself or your logo or brand. And we're going to do that again inside of another shape. So once again, choose any shape that you like. 
For me, I'm just going to stick with what I already had and go for that rounded rectangle. And I'm just going to hold down shift just to keep those proportions perfect. Just so we get our perfect square. And once again, I'm going to change those corners to match this one just to keep it consistent. So I'm going to change that down to 10%. And I'm just going to go ahead, grab that move tool and move this into place. And of course, you can make this bigger or smaller if you like. It's entirely up to you. So that position is OK. Might move that over a little bit. If you want to get absolutely perfect with your pixels from edge to edge, then you can do that manually down here on your right hand side. For me, being quick, I just want to get on with this. So I'm not too worried about the final position at the moment. So what we need to do now is either add your image in there or your logo or brand. And I'm just going to do this by going back to the stock menu again. And I'm just going to search for any random face that I can put in there. So she will do fine. Let's drag her in. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can resize it because it's far too big. So I'm going to bring that down and roughly put it to where I need it. And zoom back in with Command or Control Zero. And it's going to move her over that box that we just created. So what we need to do now is go back to our layers and we need to nest her inside of this box. And the way we do that is just select that layer and just pull it down to we've got this big blue bar and just pull it over slightly to your right to the indents and then just let it go. And now she's inside that box that we just created. And as long as you make sure you are on the image itself, which is that one right there, we can freely move her around inside of this box and just position that however you like. You can also resize it. It's entirely up to you how you want to do that or what image you would like to use. So I'm going to leave it like that for now. I'm just going to recenter that with command or control zero. So at this point, you can go ahead and move this as a whole if you want to, or you can just go and put another drop shadow on it like we did on the other one. I'm going to give that a try, see how it looks. I may or may not keep that yet, but we'll just see how it is. And we're going to go for something less than that because it's a smaller shape. So before we did 10 pixels, and now I'm going to go for around two or three. I think I'll try two first and just see how that looks. So I don't really feel like that's enough. So I'm just going to go back in there and change that to three pixels. I think if we did five, it'd be too much. So I just want to kind of stay in the lower range. So for me, that isn't looking too bad. I mean, you guys might want to go higher, but I definitely wouldn't myself. But it's entirely up to you. If we go for five, I feel like it's kind of separating a little bit too much of the background. So I definitely want to stick with that at the three that I just had. So I'm just going to undo that with command or control Z. And now that's back on the three that I just had. So what we need to do now is just add a little bit of content in here with text, such as your name or your YouTube channel. And we'll do that just by grabbing ourselves that text tool, artistic text tool. And we can just write in anything you like here. I'm just going to write in your name. And I'm going to resize that. This is dependent how you like it. You can make this as big or small as you like. Entirely up to you. It's going to be your design. So I'm just going to move that into place. And I'm going to change that font because I'm not too keen on that. So I'm just going to go to something I've recently used and maybe use that one right there. And once you've got the font that you're happy with, we can just go ahead and make a copy of this to be quicker. So Command or Control C to copy or Command and Control V to paste. Bring that back down and roughly around there. And we can then rename this to your YouTube channel. And once again, this is entirely up to you how you like to size this. For me, I always like it to kind of be the same length as the name above it, as this is really treated as a subtitle rather than the main title. So once you've got what you are happy with, I'm going to go over to the layers and I'm going to select both of these text layers here so we can move them together. And the way we're going to do that is select the top one, then hold down command or control and select the one underneath it. Then we can just come back over, grab our move tool. And just move us down into position to let that snap into the center using that red line right there. And just move that over to roughly where you want it on the left hand side. So to me, that is looking okay to be quick. So then finally, I'm just going to add some social media icons on here. You can put any content in there that you like. It's up to you. So for me, I've got some social media icons stored in my assets. So I'm just going to go up to my view menu, down to my studio, to my assets. You guys won't have these by default. I just downloaded these off the internet and I will link a website in the description where you could find these to download yourself. So I'm just going to drag in this Twitter and that Facebook as well as that Instagram. And then what I need to do at this point is resize these because they're far too big. So we'll start off with this Instagram at the top here and we're going to go down to the bottom in the transform menu. And what we're going to do, where we've got the width and the height, we're going to put this little lock on right there. 
And when we've got this selected, when we change this top one, it's going to change the bottom one automatically to make it easier for us. So I'm just going to change that width to roughly around 100. And then that is a better size for me. And I'm going to copy that across all of these. So just change that to 100 again and do the same on the Twitter. Then we can just go ahead and move these into place. I'm going to shop my assets so it doesn't get in the way. And it's going to drag this down and put these roughly where I want them. So I'll just center that for a minute. Grab that Facebook. And make sure that's aligned up as well. And we'll do the same with the Instagram. And just line that one up. So what we want to do now is make sure that we've got even spacing in between all of these. And the way we're going to do that is select all three of these icons. And we'll do the same as before. Select the top one. Hold down Command or Control and select the ones underneath it. Then we're going to come up here to this top menu bar where we've got the alignment options. And inside of here, we're going to come over to the right hand side and choose space horizontally. Then we're going to turn off this auto distribute. And then we could come in here and we can just change these numbers to whatever width we want to do. Leave that where it is around 45.7 and just hit that apply. Then we can just move these as a whole and make sure that they are centered in the middle of this using that big red line again. And simply just put that into position wherever you want it to go. So there is going to be fine for me. So what we can also do here as well is add them same drop shadows that we had on the photo to these elements too. So go back into the effects and put a drop shadow on this one. And we'll try three like before, but these may be a bit too much. I can already see that is. So we're going to change that to a two. And that's a little bit more subtle. You could go for 1.5 if you want. I think I will. And that's definitely looking better to me. So I'm going to do the same on all of these. Just change that to 1.5 on the radius and the offset. So you can generally see it's already starting to look pretty good as a basic title. It's not amazing, but this comes down to your own creativity and what you can come up with. This is really straightforward and quite boring. But this really is just used as a quick way of showing you how to put all this together. But I definitely would prefer if you guys use different gradients and shapes and so on. Or even go ahead and change the color of your icons if you wanted to. There's no reason why you can't have a blue for Twitter. I'm just going to go ahead and put that back for now. So before we go and export this now to use in motion, I just want to mention that the title here is more of a placeholder inside of Affinity Designer. We're not going to use this inside of motion because we won't be able to animate it as it will import it as an image and we need that as text. So we will actually write this out again inside of motion. And another thing I do want to mention is we could actually build this entire title inside of motion. But the reason I didn't want to do it that way is because it becomes a bit more complex and time consuming. And I feel you've got so many more options inside of a vector program if you want to cut shapes out as well as do various other designs that will not be possible to do in motion. So with that said, let's go ahead now and export that to use inside of motion five. And the way we're going to do that is going to go up to file. And we're going to go down to export. So once we're inside of the export menu, we want to make sure that we've got PSD selected. And that preset can just be on the Final Cut Pro. You can leave the resample as it is. And we want the whole document. We're even going to import this background image just so we can use it just as we start to animate. But we will generally remove that later on when we come to export the animation. So once you've got all that selected, just hit your export button. Give yourself a name and just save it to anywhere on your hard drive. I'm just going to call this title and just save. Then once you are ready, just go ahead and open up motion. So when we first open up motion, you'll be presented with this in front of you. And generally, this is just a starting template. And what we need to do is just make sure that we are on final cut title, that one with a T in there. And then we just pay attention to our preset menu. And this will be dependent on what you chose originally inside of Affinity Designer. I know I designed for 4K, so I can leave that the way it is. You guys may want to change that to full HD if that's what you went for. Then your frame rate with 4K should actually be 60 frames per second. And then underneath that, you've got your duration. And I think eight seconds is usually a good time for a title to come in and then back out again. However, you can change that to any number that you like. Or alternatively, we can actually change this inside of the project later on. So it's really not that important right now. So once you've selected all of these main things here, we've just got to go ahead and hit that open button. So once the program has opened up, we need to pay attention to this panel we've got in front of us right here, which contains our project and our group. 
and the group we want to go ahead and delete because we don't need that so now we've got the empty project so just a quick note i'm just going to go with a few basic things inside of motion i'm not going to cover too much about the fundamentals or any of the features as it will just make the video far too long however i am thinking about doing a crash course on motion if you guys want to learn that please let me know in the comments so for now i'm just going to cover the things that we generally do need to know so over in the library we just got a few options inside here where we're going to animate shapes and text and so on and we'll come back to that when we need that and just over here on the right to the library we got the inspector and this is where we're going to be 95 percent of the time once we start moving things or changing the sizes and so on but before we get to that we're just going to go ahead and import the project that we just created so if we just go over to the empty project and we right click on our mouse and hit that import button we just got to go ahead and find the one that we just created which is this title here and you'll see it says layer name and it's got merge layers we actually want to change that to all layers and once we've done that just hit that ok and now you can see here is our entire project that we created inside of affinity designer and now it's just a simple case of just starting to animate this how we want it to be so like i said the background image we're going to leave this for the time being while we animate it so we can kind of see it and then when we come to export it we'll actually delete that or just turn it off and that background one there we could just delete that because we don't really need that one okay so let's talk about how we begin to animate this if you look down here on the bottom section we've got what is our timeline here and inside of this timeline we've got all these same objects that we've got in our project up here and these are based really on when you want them to come in and out so come off and on again and you just find when we drag this along you can see we've got these seconds up here and this tells us where we are in the timeline so if we wanted for instance to start at three seconds here and we want this Twitter icon to turn on at three seconds we would just go ahead and find the Twitter right here and we just need to use our keyboard for this and we want this to come in so if we want it to come in at three seconds we've just got to put the I button on the keyboard so that now as you can see it deletes the point here and it will actually start off at three seconds so if I come back and I just hit that play button with the space bar you can see it's not visible at the moment then when three seconds hits it comes on and it's the same principle when we want it to go off we just got to use the o so at five seconds if we want this twitter to go off we're just going to hit that o button on the keyboard and then that will turn it off so just remember it's i for in and it's o for out so if we play that again it's going to come on at three seconds and it's going to go off again at five that's kind of basic animation that's not really anything too great but it's just a rough idea of how you would do this so i'm just going to go ahead and undo that just for a minute so i can start again and if you press play with your space bar it's just going to continue to loop again and again and again till you stop so now you understand the ins and out points of this we're going to talk about how we now start moving things to where we want them to go so first of all we've got to figure out how we want to animate this i'm going to keep it quite basic just so it's kind of more easy for you guys to follow along to so i think this background one here we're going to have come from the bottom it's going to spring up and then come back down on itself so what you want to do really before you start beginning to animate any of this is you want to find your resting position and what i mean by this is generally this is how we want this title to display when we get to three seconds perhaps so we want all the animation to begin from zero to three seconds and when we get to three seconds this is how it's going to be so let's go ahead and get started with animating this so the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and select the first layer you want to work on for me it's going to be this layer three background image so once you've selected that you can now see on the left hand side we have all these options available inside of your inspector and we've got some additional menus such as behaviors filters and image but for the most part we are going to be in properties and inside the properties we've got this transform section where you position rotation and scale etc and this is all controlled by key points and the way we're going to add key point or keyframe to be more specific is we're going to come over to this little diamond over here with a cross in the middle which says add a keyframe and the way this generally works is we've got to come down here into our playhead area and we've got to determine where we want to add these keyframes so at the moment we are on three seconds i feel that might be a little bit too long for this to animate in so i'm actually going to drag this down to maybe around one and a half so somewhere around there so at one and a half seconds i want this background graphic to be visible so i'm going to go ahead now and focus on my position and i'm going to add my first keyframe just by tapping on that add keyframe 
So if we look now on our layer three down here, we've got this little red keyframe right there, which is going to tell this graphic at when we get to one and a half seconds, you need to be in this position right here. So what we need to do now in order to make this animate is we've got to bring this across now down to one second. And like I said before, I like to kind of work backwards here on the intro because it's a lot easier if you've designed this inside of Affinity Designer and you've already got this laid out how you want it. I know this is where I want it to sit when we come into one and a half seconds. So for me, I'm going to work backwards here just so I know I can end up at that point. And I hope that makes sense to you. But moving on with this, now we are at one second. I want this to go slightly up. So I'm going to come back over here now to the position and we don't have to add another keyframe at this point. All we've got to do really is adjust this Y position and then we'll add it automatically. So if I just start dragging this up with my mouse and I just watch that graphic and I can see it moving up, I'm just going to move it to where roughly I'm happy with. So about 890 there for me. And you can see it's just out added another one right here automatically for us. And you can see it twice up here because this is kind of the entire project or the group as you can see up here. So you can just generally ignore that one there and just focus on this one down here, which is our layer three. So if we just start to scrub over this a little bit, you can see it's starting to move if you look at the screen. So there is two keyframes for us. And what I want to do now is bring it all the way to the start. And at this point, I want this to be off the screen. So it's going to come up, bounce a little and come back down. So all we've got to do now is come back over to the position. And we're just going to drag this down now with the mouse and just watch that go off the screen. So anywhere around there would be perfectly fine. Alternatively, you can double tap on this and just add in your numbers manually, but it's a lot easier with a mouse in my opinion. So that is that intro done in terms of bringing that background in. So if I just click off this and I just hit that space bar, you can see how this works. So there you go up, back down again, and it was easy as that. It just generally comes out of nowhere, springs up a bit and back down. And this is all it is in terms of animation. It's just all done through keyframes. I mean, you can get so much more creative and complicated than this, but this really is just a basic starting point just to get you guys to create one of these titles. So what we want to do now, once we get to one and a half, because we generally know that this is now fully open on the background, we're going to animate her in next. So we're going to click on her layer, which is layer four. And the way I'm going to animate her, I think I'm just going to scale her in. So I think when we come to around two seconds, perhaps I'm going to have her fully visible. So we can go to that scale now and we're going to add our first keyframe now, which is at 100%. And I'm going to bring her down roughly to maybe 145 because I'm going to have her go a little bit bigger as well like we did before. So I'm just going to adjust that slightly to probably around that size. So that's added our next keyframe for us as we can see. And then when we come all the way to the start again, in fact, my mistake, I didn't want to come to the start. I actually wanted to come here onto that 130 because we're going to have her fade in from this point. And what we need to do now is just change this 109 to zero so you can't see her. And then if we just reset that again and we just start, you can see how this comes together just like that. So that is two parts of this title already complete and it was really straightforward and easy. So all we want to do now really is just start animating these graphics in as well from however you want to do this as well as animate the text and it's just a case of fading that back out again and it's complete. So just to be a bit quicker I'm going to make this quite a simple animation as well with these graphics. So at this point on two seconds I think I'm going to have all of these kind of shooting at the same time. So by 2.30 I think two and a half seconds I want all of these visible. So if we now first select our Twitter and we're just going to focus on the position again at that first keyframe so we know this is where we want it to be at two and a half seconds. Now I'm just going to drag this over here to two seconds and at this point I'm going to adjust the X position because I want this to shoot off from the left hand side. So I'm just going to start to drag this now and pull it off the screen like we did before so we can no longer see it. So there is that one done. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the next one. So we've got the Instagram on that side and we're going to add our keyframe here on the position again. And then we're going to go ahead and go back to two seconds like we did before. And this time round, we want this to shoot off on the other direction to the right. So we're going to move this X position to the right and keep doing that all the way until you come off the screen. So anywhere around there will be fine. And then finally, we're just going to do the Facebook one. And this one, I think we're going to have shoot from the top. So once again, come all the way over to two and a half. So they all line up together at the end. 
add that first that keyframe there on your position bring it back to that two seconds and with this one we're going to adjust the y and we're going to move up and just take that off the screen that way and just so we can't see anymore and there we go so if we just go ahead and reset this now we can see how it all comes together just like that and like i said it's very basic but you can generally see how easy this is and what we want to do now really is when all these come in we can start to bring this text in and i want to delete these text layers because like i said it was just a placeholder in order to animate these we actually need to write them inside of motion so i'm just going to go ahead and just delete those quickly and then we're going to come down here and we're going to grab our text tool and we can just simply start typing on here so once again i'm just going to write in your name and now you can see over on the left hand side we've got some additional options inside of the text where we can change the font and the size etc and the alignment but i'm just going to make this a little bit bigger i'm not going to go too fancy with this because i want to be a bit quicker so i'm quite happy with the way that is at the moment so i'm just going to go ahead and change the color of that i think because i can't really see it when it's in white so to do that we've got to come up and we've got to go to the appearance and you can see just down here where it says face, we've got this color white here. I just want to go ahead and change that to black. Then once you are happy with that, if we just go over here and we grab our select tool right there, we can just start to move this into position. You can do this with the mouse, but I generally find it a lot better to actually use the X and Y position to get this to exactly where you want it to go. So I'm just going to adjust it slightly over here, maybe around there. And just going to make that Y somewhere around there then once you've got that what i'm going to do is make a copy and paste of this so command c to copy and command v to paste and now you can see in the layers we've got that extra copy and if we just come back over to our properties and all we want to do now is ignore the x because i want this to line up the exact same here on the left hand side and we're just going to adjust this y just to bring that one down so anywhere around there and we can just go ahead and double tap and just change the name of that so it'd be your youtube channel like it was before so let's go ahead and type that in then we can just go and resize that one also just bring that down a little bit like i said before you can make that as big as you like it's entirely up to you it does look a bit small on that font so i'm going to make that a little bit bigger so anywhere around there is perfectly fine just to get this finished so now we've done that we can just carry on with this but you can generally see here if you pay attention down on our timeline that is added these titles in at 230 two and a half seconds and that's because when we created these it was actually on two and a half seconds with the playhead whereas if i would have put this back to the beginning it would have created them over here this isn't a problem because you can just simply just drag and move these over if you wanted to it's entirely up to you but i want these to start at 230 anyway so that doesn't generally matter to me so now we can begin animating this text so we're going to do that your name first and the way we're going to do this is we're going to come over to our library section on the left hand side and inside of here we are going to go into behaviors and we're going to look for text animation and inside of here we've got these options here and if we click on these you can see how it shows you a little preview up here of what these do and underneath that we've got the text sequence as well and these are some more inside of here and you just have a little preview of what it's doing up there so you can choose any of these that you generally like so we can just have that one and you'll notice you always have an in and an out so obviously when you fade it in and you want to bring it back out again you just choose the opposite one to that so i'm just going to try and find something quick so that'll do for me on this one and all we've got to do is drag this over the layer so if i just go ahead now and pull this and drop it over your name it's now applied this in so if we just go ahead and play that you'll be able to see how this actually works just like that so i just want to move this off the screen so we can actually see it there you go and we can have a different one on the one underneath if you wanted to so i'm going to bring that back to two and a half seconds again and now we'll select youtube channel and we'll just find a different one here maybe that rotate in see what that one looks like it's kind of similar so we'll go for that scale in in my opinion most of these are generally starting to look the same but we'll go for that one on this one just to make it a little bit different so just drag and drop over that title and you can see now inside of your layers that is kind of inside of a group the effect is just right there so if we just go ahead and play this again now and just see what we've got so that isn't too bad at all and of course there are manual ways of doing all this with your text and stuff but i think just to use some of these inside of here is going to speed up your process 
There's so much to be learned in terms of creativity inside the motion, but that is obviously for another video, maybe the crash course I mentioned. So at this point, we just got to figure out how we want this to fade back out. We can kind of do the same thing we did here and start dragging things off in different directions and scaling, etc. Or we can just focus on the entire group and just do that all in all. So I might do it that way just to be a bit quicker and show you that you can do it that way. So if we actually select the title right here, this is going to select the entire group then we can just animate this as a whole. But the first thing I need to do is move this background layer as it's going to affect that as well when we come to animate all of this. So in order to do that, I just need to select that and just drag it outside of that title or that group, just put it above it. And then if I just go ahead and shut that group and I want to move the group on top of that title. So then we're only affecting this group itself and not that background image. And if we pay attention now in our playhead area, We've got this group section right there so we can start adding keyframes to that group and just get this to fade out or whatever it is we want to do with that. So like I said, at five seconds, I'm quite happy for this position to end here. So if we go back to our properties and we just put a keyframe for our position and I'm going to have this move up slightly. So and maybe five thirty, five and a half. And we're just going to adjust that Y position just to move that up. And I'm going to go up around 45, I think. And then I'm going to have it shoot back down around six seconds. So we just bring that over to six. And I'm just going to bring that down till it goes off the screen. So that will do for that. And let's just see what we got here. So I'm just going to play this from the beginning and see if I'm happy with how we created this. So that doesn't look too bad as a starting point. So all that is left to do right now is just cut this animation off at six seconds as that is complete. So if we drag the playhead over to six seconds and we select the group just in here. So we know we've got everything inside of that group. If we just shut that down, we can see. Then all we've got to do is press the O on our keyboard, which is our out point, just like that. And now you can see that it's been trimmed to that six seconds. And finally, we just got to go over to the right hand side, just drag this little bit right there and just drag that over to the six second point. And then that finalizes that as being a six second clip. And then once we hit that play button, that is just going to continue to keep looping on that six second clip, as you can see. So that is finished. And all we've got to do from this point now is export it. But before we do that, we want to delete the background because it's going to export with the graphic if we don't delete that. So just go ahead and select and delete that. And now we've just got this black background here as we play it. But this will become transparent once we come to export that. So don't worry about that being black. And all we've got to do to export it is go up to your file menu on your top left hand side. And just go down to save as and we're just going to give this a name inside of this template name you can call this anything you like i'm just going to call this demo and inside of here you've got your categories folder which you can create a new one in there as well as your themes you can create a new theme folder for me i've already set these up on previous projects i've worked on so this is where i'm going to put mine inside the mats titles and my youtube theme and once you've done that just go ahead and hit that publish button and then that is finished. That is all we have to do inside the motion. So all we've got to do from here is just go ahead and open up Final Cut. Then once we are inside the Final Cut Pro and you've loaded yourself a clip into your timeline, all we've got to do then is go up to our top left hand side and we're going to choose that title and generators option there. Then we're just going to find that folder where we saved our project. For me, it was Matt's titles and it was that demo one right here that we created. So we're just going to select that and drag it on top of our clip. And then, of course, you can move that into position to anywhere you want to put it. And then just go ahead and hit that play button or space bar when you're ready. And we can see on the video how it appears and it all works as it should. And that black background has now disappeared that I talked about. So another thing I really love about using Final Cut Pro and Motion together is whatever we create in there remains editable. So what I mean by that is we can actually come in here now and click on your name. And over on the right hand side, you can see we've got all these options now that we can change as well as the name itself. So I could actually go in here and write my name instead, just like that. And you can see it's changed over here now. And I can change the size of that if I wanted to, as well as the font. And just choose all different settings in here, such as the X and Y position or the rotation. We can add an outline or a drop shadow. And you can generally see that we can also do that on the text underneath there. I'm going to change that font so we can read it. So I'm just going to put it like that, make that a little bit smaller. 
Then when we go ahead and play this again from the beginning, it will now load on there with my name instead. So if we go ahead and watch this, you can see it now says Matthew Ward. And another thing we could have done inside the motion is we could have added this image. And once we bring that into Final Cut, we could actually change that image inside here as well to something completely different every time you use it. And we would have created that using the drop zone, but that definitely is for another video. This was just to get you started, but you can of course change the image inside the Final Cut as well as the text. You can even change these icons. It's all going to be editable if you just change a few settings inside of motion. So finally, what else we can do is we can actually make this clip shorter or longer. If you feel that it comes in and goes out too quick, we can just drag this and then we'll actually extend that. So it'll make the animation longer. So if I start to play this now, it's going to take longer to come up and start to animate in. Originally it took six seconds. I think now it takes around eight or nine I just put. So that's definitely a little bit too long. Or alternatively, we could shrink it and you can make the animation even quicker. So it comes in and out a lot faster. So it's a lot of flexibility when you come to create your own, as well as making sure it's completely personalized to the kind of thing that you want, as well as represent your content. But you can generally see we've made this entire project in around half an hour, maybe a little bit longer. But you've got to think in that time, we've generally created the mock-up of it and we've animated it and we brought it into Final Cut. So around 30 minutes of your time is definitely worth making your own rather than paying for one of these off somebody else. So with that said and done, I hope you found this video useful and you learned some new skills. If you did like the video, then please hit that like button as it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and helps other people find my content. And of course, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and check out any other content I currently have available as well as all my future releases. And as I stated before, I'm thinking about doing a Motion 5 crash course. If you do want to see that, then let me know in the comments. And also, if you are new to Affinity Designer and you want to learn how to use that, I've also got a crash course, which I will link in the top right hand corner now. So go and check that one out. But for now, have a great day and I will see you in the next video.